So this is lesson one of biology two and it's about the digestive system. So first of all, if you pause the video and have a look, do you understand what the organs are in the digestive system? Can you name them all? Do you know the correct labels for them? And what are the characters doing in the cartoon? What is the point of digestion? So you can pause that and have a, have a go at writing down what you think. So we're going to do the first of two lessons on digestion where you can develop ideas about digestion. So you can label the digestive system correctly and then explain the purpose of digestion and then describe the lock and key theory of enzyme action. So the first thing we're going to do is label the digestive system. So we've got the mouth which leads to a pipe, which you might have called a food pipe, but we now need to be able to call this the esophagus. So watch the spelling, so that's meant to be an E, so esophagus. And then that tube moves down into a J-shaped bag called the stomach, which then leads towards the small intestine. But first of all, there is a leaf-shaped organ called the pancreas. and it moves into the small intestine. So the squiggly bits in the middle of the small intestine, so it's got two parts actually. So I'm just gonna put small intestine. And the two parts are extra information that will help you at GCSE, but you're not in GCSE yet, you're in year nine. So the small intestine is made of two parts. The first part is called the duodenum. Some videos on the internet will call it the duodenum, that's fine. And then we've got the ileum. And then that moves at this point here into a larger intestine. So that's the large intestine. But the large intestine has actually got three parts as well. You don't need to know them all, but I suspect you'll have know, you know, know at least one of them. So you've got the large intestine, which the larger part of it is called the colon. And then there's this little bulb bit here which is situated in a place that I think you'll um, recognize and that's called the rectum so I describe this as kind of like a little poo pantry so it's where your poo sits until it's ready to come out because obviously we're civilized and it doesn't just drop out like it does with animals so the um, feces are actually made in the colon and they stay in the rectum until it's time to come out and then there is a sphincter at the bottom which is called the anus. Hopefully your diagram will look a lot neater than mine. So let's look at the point of digestion. That sentence on here does actually look quite big and complicated, but it's not really. So if we have a look, it is the breakdown of large insoluble molecules. So they are not able to be dissolved, they're insoluble and they are large when you first start eating. And we don't just mean large as in big pieces, we mean they are large molecules. So some of them are quite long chains of monomers. And we break them down into small soluble molecules. And the purpose of this is so that they can be absorbed into the blood. So the blood can move all around your body, which means that if those small soluble molecules move into the blood, they can be delivered to all of the parts of the body that need them. So what I would usually do is I'd do a demonstration and I'm gutted that you won't be able to get to see that and I'll do it when we get back in school, but usually I get some lunch that I've prepared earlier, which you can see here. And then I um, model the whole parts of the digestion so that you can see it happening before you while you fill in a sheet that's like this. So you're still going to fill in this sheet, but I'm just going to do it in a, in a way that's a bit more designed for remote learning. So feel free to look at some videos on YouTube if you can find them. You just have to be careful that they are accurate and they say the same things that I'm saying. So what I would like you to do first of all is you can listen to me talking through the, the points of the video first. Then if you want you can make notes as I go. Don't try and stop me and write down everything I'm saying because later on I want you to be able to write down what you think you can remember from that like a memory task. So it might be that as you're listening to me you just write down the key words that I'm saying. 
So I'm going to go through digestion to start off with and then I'm going to tell you a little bit about enzymes. So the first place that digestion starts is in the mouth. So I'm not sure whether you already know this but it will make sense but the mouth is actually neutral which is pH 7 and you know that pH 7 is green when you look at the pH scale if you test it with universal indicator. So the mouth is actual, actually neutral, it's not acid and it's not alkali. And obviously you've got teeth. Now the teeth grind the food and chop it up into smaller pieces. So we call that mechanical digestion. So mechanical digestion chops the food up into smaller pieces. Now you'll have heard me say this more in the lesson, you know, even in chemistry, um, that we know that smaller pieces have a larger surface area. Now that larger surface area will help with the addition of some chemicals that we have in our mouth, which is chemical digestion, so chemical, which are called enzymes. So this particular enzyme in the mouth is called amylase, but at the moment I'm happy if you just remember that it's called an enzyme. But amylase is a particular enzyme and you'll find that most of them end in ASE and it breaks down starch so this is starch here this long chain of those red blobs and amylase breaks down that chain of red blobs into small red blobs so it breaks it down from large insoluble molecules to small soluble molecules and these red blobs are actually called glucose which I know that you've heard of before so starch to start off with is a chain of glucose and amylase is an enzyme that breaks it down. So glucose is now small and soluble. So you have to pay attention to is when you eat your food, so let's say you're eating a bacon sandwich, you're only going to be touching the carbohydrates, the starch. So you're only really going to be breaking down the bread in this way. You might chop up the bacon into smaller pieces and there might even be some butter on your bread, but you will not start to digest that yet. So then your food moves down the esophagus and into the stomach. So that's what this organ is here, the stomach. And the stomach is pH 3, which you know is acidic. So if we think about what makes that acidic, well, what makes it acidic is an acid called hydrochloric acid, which you've probably used in the lab. So you have hydrochloric acid in your stomach, which is pH 3. Now it's very important that you don't ever say that the hydrochloric acid breaks down food because it doesn't, hydrochloric acid does not digest food. The reason that it is in the stomach is because the enzyme prefers to work in acidic conditions and it also kills bacteria on your food. So you do actually ingest quite a lot of bacteria, it's impossible to get rid of all of it. So hydrochloric acid has two jobs, to kill the bacteria on your food and to provide the correct pH for the enzyme to work, but it does not digest your food. So what does happen in the stomach is we've got a bit more mechanical digestion. So your stomach churns the food up and adequately mixes the food with enzymes and that's called mechanical digestion because it's a churning sort of a motion and the stomach's actually got three layers of muscle to be able to allow it to do that. But there's also chemical digestion in the stomach and in the stomach there is a chemical which is an enzyme which is called protease. Now think about what you think protease might break down so yes protease breaks down protein and it breaks down protein into amino acids you can see there they're amino acids there's a few different types of those 20 to, to be precise of amino acids which is why they're different colored so if you remember previously the starch is only one colour because it's made of glucose, whereas you can have different combinations of amino acids making a protein. But again, through mechanical digestion and chemical digestion where protease is in its ideal conditions, which is pH 3, it is broken down from a large insoluble molecule into a small soluble molecule. So if we go back to that bacon sandwich, we've started digesting the starch in the bread in the mouth 
Now we've moved to the stomach, we're working on the bacon at the moment. And then what happens is your food moves to the first part of the small intestine, which I said was called the duodenum. It's bypassed the pancreas as it does this. And the pancreas has a very important job because the pancreas releases enzymes. So it releases amylase into the duodenum. It releases protease into the duodenum and you already know what they do but it also releases lipase into the duodenum now lipase breaks down lipids and you might think I don't really know what they are and I'm telling you that because lipase breaks down lipids and it helps you remember what they do Gonna move that out of the way so I can carry on writing. So lipids are actually fats. So lipids are fats. So lipase breaks down fat. So we'd start working on the butter here. So this would be the first time that the fats have been touched at all. And they're broken down into two types of small soluble molecules. First are called fatty acids, and the second is called glycerol. Now, just in case you're interested, you get one glycerol in a fat to three fatty acids. So they're not like big long chains, but they have these molecules in, so they're made of two kinds of things. But not only are you breaking down the fats here, you're continuing to break down the carbohydrates because amylase can continue to break down starch into glucose and protease can continue to break down proteins into amino acids and finish those off. The big difference here being that they do it in pH 8. So the small intestine is pH 8 because that's the ideal conditions for those enzymes to work which also means that this amylase and protease are a different kind to the one that you found in the mouth or in the stomach. Now the liver, it releases a substance called bile, which you've probably heard of, and bile helps to break down fats, but we'll talk about that later on in key stage four. So at the moment we can just say that the liver releases bile and it helps to break down fats more efficiently. So we've been through digestion in the mouth, we've been through digestion in the stomach and we've been through digestion in the small intestine. So what you can do now is you can pause the video and you can try and fill in the sheet from memory or you can continue. It's up to you how you do it and it might take you a while to get through this first lesson so it doesn't matter if it takes you longer than an hour. Okay, so I'm just going to quickly tell you about what enzymes do. So you heard me mention enzymes, and these are involved in chemical digestion. And this is an enzyme. So the enzymes that I've mentioned are amylase, protease, and lipase. Well, enzymes are made of protein themselves, so they are made of protein. And this is really good because proteins are highly specific. So the enzyme actually has this region here that is highly specific. It's been made simple here in the model by making it look like a simple shape, but they're not like that in reality. But it's got this highly specific region, which we call the active site. So a region or a place could be called a site, like a building site, not like site which is the ability to see with your eyes. So it's called an active site because that's the active region. And the substrate is the chemical that fits into the active site. So you can see that they have a complementary shape. So complementary, and it's got an E there, not an I. So it's not complement like Mrs. Clark is a good teacher. It's complement like goes together like peas and carrots, salt and pepper. So complementary shape which means matching so they're not the same shape because if they were the same shape they wouldn't fit together they are matching so the enzyme and the substrate can join together and the enzyme breaks down the substrate so at the moment substrate is a new word for you so i'm just going to get rid of this writing so that i can show you it again So you can see how it works. I'm just going to do a little summary at the bottom. So basically you have your enzyme plus your substrate. 
and then what happens is that substrate is then broken down into small soluble mo molecules which are called products. So if I give you an example from a context we've already studied, so you've had amylase which is an enzyme that breaks down starch. So starch is a complementary shape to amylase, they fit together and that forms glucose. So enzymes break down large insoluble molecules into small soluble ones. So if you look at this diagram here, you'll be able to see exactly how they work. Now usually people look and they think, oh, enzymes are really complicated, but they're not really. If I got a small child to say, to look at this picture, and you can try it if you've got little brothers and sisters, how do they work? They will be able to tell you that this substrate matches with that enzyme and this substrate matches with that enzyme and this substrate matches with that enzyme because you all started off probably when you're about one or two years old with a shape sorter so you understand the concepts of shapes fitting together all i'm telling you now is that that matching word can be called complementary so lipase is complementary to lipids or fats but lipase is not complementary to starch and that's why it can't break it down. Protease is complementary to protein but it's not complementary to lipids which is why it can't break it down. So this is called the lock and key theory because that's exactly how a lock and key works. Okay, you've got this sheet in, in your content library so you should be able to fill it in you might want to fill in enzymes if it's up to you you don't need to fill in large intestine yet and you don't need to fill in small intestine absorption yet what you need to do is go back and see if you remember what happens in the mouth and try and fill it in, in as much detail as possible what happens in the stomach what happens in the small intestine from a digestion point of view and then if you can remember what the enzymes are or how they work then when you've done that, you can pause the video and you can use this slide to mark it. And I'll make sure that this appears in your content library as well. Okay? Just make sure you email me if you've got any questions.